Hello everyone, my name is Katie Carson and I'm the Duchess of Suds here at Royalty Soaps. If you've never heard of Chip and Joanna Gaines, <laughs> has you been living under a rock? Chip and Joanna are the power couple behind HGTV's hit show Fixer Upper. They own the Magnolia Market, Silos and Table here in Texas, Waco, Texas to be exact. And they've made an absolute tourist destination out of what used to just be a Baylor College town. <laughs> And last year, in partnership with Target, they launched an exclusive homeware collection called Hearth and Hand. Honestly, I feel a little bad because I live two hours away from the silos and market and I have never been there. And I know there are some people who would like kill to get that opportunity. I think I should do another soap travels video where I go down to Waco and actually stay in one of the houses that Chip and Joanna redid. Click the thumbs up if you think that's a good idea. I'll write that down on my 2019 to-do list. Target launched the 2018 holiday collection a couple of months ago, and the products and the color palettes and the photography were so inspiring, a soap idea was born. I tried to create a bar that I felt would fit right into any bathroom containing pieces of the Hearth and Hand collection, and hopefully I've done Joanna Gaines proud. So now that you have the history, let's make some soap. In this big container that we got from Target, it's a Sterilite container, and let's see, it's 15 liters or 16 quarts. I have all of my melted oils. The recipe is composed of olive oil, organic sustainably sourced palm oil, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, and castor oil. The recipe that I use in basically every single video, unless I specify otherwise, is free. It is available for use. You can sell your recipes that have it in it. You can just make it for a hobby. It's yours to do with what you please. And it's listed down in the description box below. It took me years to get a recipe that I felt was like perfect and easy to use for everybody and I'm really happy that I get to share that with y'all. And then over here in this container I have my lye water solution. I'm gonna start pouring that down the stick blender. It's at room temperature which for us is around 75 degrees Fahrenheit and this recipe also utilizes a very heavy water discount. Water discounts in my opinion are amazing. They make your scent stronger, they make your bars harder quicker, it makes you have less of a chance of soda ash, and you hardly ever get glycerin rivers. So in my opinion, there's really no reason to not use one unless you're trying to make a really, really intricate swirl. By intricate, I mean something like a Taiwan swirl. That That's kind of hard to do when your soap is like this, unless you use a fragrance oil that makes it really liquidy. So you can still pull that off. It just depends on what fragrance oil you're using. So now I'm gonna hold down this top button. It's the little safety button and I'm gonna push high at the same time. We're gonna blend it up until we're just past emulsification. Soaps with a water discount also come to trace a lot faster than soaps that are using full water. Full water you could be standing around blending for anywhere from five to eight minutes depending on your recipe. Could be even longer if you're working with 100% olive oil, but with a heavy water discount, I just blended that up for about 30 or 45 seconds and it's already ready to go. So for our Joanna Gaines hearth and hand inspired soap, we're going to have a swirl on the middle. It's going to be a silvery gray so we're gonna put that in here and then on the top we're gonna have a very dark hunter green it seems to me like lots of the designs and lots of the color palettes that Joanna uses in the fixer upper show but also in her target brand utilize neutrals and mainly grays and then she likes to use accents like navy blue crimson red and hunter green the green I'm gonna set off to the side for right now and we're going to focus Focus on the gray and the white. These are going to be mixed together to make a marble look. Another thing that I've seen Joanna really likes, she likes marble and concrete, especially for backsplashes and um, kitchen counters. The majority of the soap is going to be white, so in this small container with my little popsicle stick, I have mixed up water-soluble titanium dioxide. There's two different types. There's oil-soluble and there's water-soluble. I prefer water soluble 
a lot easier to mix up, tends to be stronger. So I'm just gonna plunk that right in here. And then for the silver, we're gonna be using antique silver. This is from TKB. It's a beautiful shimmery silver, but it still leans toward the darker side, which I like. So now again with my stick blender, I'm gonna blend in those colors. The fragrance oil we are using today is called Cracklin' Birch. We have used this for one other low top soap this month because while the fragrance is super versatile and I think a ton of people are gonna like it, I wanted to kind of offer it in two different designs. So if you didn't prefer one but you liked the idea of the fragrance oil, you have another option. I also think this matches the vibe of the Gaineses and all of their design ideas and sort of a rural countryside with a modern twist feeling. I already know how this fragrance oil behaves, so I'm gonna go ahead and blend it in with my stick blender on low. Okay, so now I'm taking the gray and I'm pouring it into the bucket. It's already setting up a little bit, so I'm not rushing, but I am moving rather swiftly. Scrapey, scrapey, my little containy. And we're gonna start pouring into our lined slab mold. Okay, we're gonna start in one corner. We're gonna come around to the side. Oh yeah. This is gonna look really marbled and really cool by the end of it. Just gonna keep pouring all that in. This literally looks exactly the way I envisioned it. I'm so happy. Now that the bucket has been scraped, I'm gonna tap this down on the floor to make it more level. And now I'm gonna scoot it off to the side and we're gonna work on mixing up that green layer for the top. Here's the bucket we placed off to the side and we're gonna add two colors. We're gonna add some alpine green and some snake island green. And before before I even blend that in with the stick blender, I'm gonna go ahead and add the proper amount of fragrance oil. This has already been pre-measured for the weight of the soap. All right, now that our green, our nice alpine green is all ready to go, we can pour it on top. By the time the green is ready to be poured in, this part is already set up and ready to go, which I love. Just enough time to mix up your next layer, but not so long that you're waiting to, to pour your next layer. Wow, I love green on the tops of soap. It just looks so fresh. All right, so I'm scraping out my containy, and then we're gonna put some pretty embeds on top. At first, I thought I might do something metallic, but then I felt like that might be straying away from the theme, so we're gonna do some natural botanicals instead. We'll begin with some organic fair trade coffee beans. I got these from Amazon. They're very potent smelling. Even though the soap doesn't have much of a coffee scent, I feel like coffee beans just kind of evoke feelings of comfort and home and warmth and that's sort of what we're trying to portray with this. And we're not adding enough of them that their smell will even be noticeable in the final product. This is really just for visual appeal. All of my loaves have been marked so I know exactly where I need to put them and I'm just trying to aim for the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, we're going for a little bit more rugged anyway, so them not being perfect might actually be a good thing. I also like coffee beans because no matter what your studio is like, be it humid or arid or hot or cold, it's not gonna change anything. They're not gonna sweat, they're not gonna melt. They're gonna look exactly the same way as they look when you pop them in here on top when the soap is wet. Next, we're adding some salt. This specific salt is called Bath Water Crystals. It's from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I like this one because I find that it stands up against the weather the best. Salt is a temperamental thing to add on top of your soap. It just is. And because the soap is wet on top, I do expect for some of it to dissolve and evaporate. It's gonna leave a really, really cool design on top. It sort of ends up looking like a cantaloupe rind. I know that sounds weird, but <laughs> that's the way it kind of looks. I've seen a couple of soap makers use salt so that they could brush it off later to get that 
that rind effect. But yeah, if you live in a very moisture prone climate and you don't have good moisture control in your studio, I don't recommend putting soaps I don't recommend putting salts on top of your soap because they will just attract all that moisture and then they will melt and instead of having those nice granules on top you will just have big puddles and that is not fun. The final thing I'm adding to the top here are some organic fair trade blueberry seeds. This also adds an element of sort of rustic nature inspired. It always kind of reminds me of bird seed and little cardinals coming to a feeder in the winter after snow and I'm basically putting that down the middle as well but blueberry seeds are really really small so they kind of go everywhere anyway now I know I said I'm not adding any glitz and glam on top and that's still true but I've taken some more of the salts and I've covered them in velvet pearl I don't mind using velvet pearl for this because it's a very matte mica it's not very shiny but velvet pearl adds a lot to the color and I'm not really liking how this is just sort of fading into the background. I want it to be a little more distinct than that. I know this video has been very design heavy. Lots of talking y'all through the processes of how I think and how I put designs together. So hopefully you guys like the little, um, you know, inside the mind, <laughs> inside the design mind of Katie. So I'm just adding a few on there. These look nice. They look like little white rocks. I think that's gonna look a lot better and tie well into the bottom of the soap. So the final thing we have to do, spritz the top with rubbing alcohol. Greens have a tendency to ash. So it's really good to make sure this has a generous spritzing. And then maybe even if you have a very pigmented soap top like this one is, greens, blues, purples, anything that's pigmented, it honestly isn't exclusive to greens, that you come back and you continue to spritz it over and over and over again. So probably every hour or so, as long as you can manage it. But that's it. We're done. Here we are with a little close up. You can just see how pigmented that green is now that the harsh lights aren't directly over it. You can also see the details of the white salt and the clear salt and all the little textured bits on top. It smells amazing. Very outdoorsy, but not so much that it's overwhelming or off-putting. So I'm gonna wait 18 to 24 hours to split this slab into loaves and cut the loaves into bars. This soap has gone the most absolute perfect color. I'm really digging it on top. That's like exactly what I was going for. So I'm gonna push it on through. And let's take one of the inside pieces out first. Oh, wow. Oh, that looks superb. Perfectly marbled. That's exactly what I was looking for. The smell is crisp. It's clean. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, I feel we've done Joanna Gaines proud with this one. Because I have lots of little pretty embeds on top, I'm gonna turn this on the side. Then I'm gonna press down gently with Lord Kermit. Let's pop one out of the middle. Oh yes. So here's what the soap looks like on the inside. You've got that swirly marbled pattern on the bottom, the green on the top, and then you have the awesome little speckledy bits of all those different additives. Blueberry seeds, sea salt, and coffee beans. It really does smell superb, and the intricacy of the swirls on the inside is delightful. Some people told me recently, Katie, you do so many in the pot swirls, but really they just yield such beautiful results. I can hardly stop myself. The question of the day is, would you ever shop at Target to buy your interior decor? I know some people think it's like one step above Walmart and that it's like really cheap. And then I know that there's other people who are like, no, it's great quality and I love getting everything there. I personally think I walk somewhere in the middle. There's a few things I wouldn't purchase from them just because I can get the same thing at Walmart for a better price. 
advice. But then there's certain items that, I mean, it's just too good for what you're getting. So to vote on the question of the day, you can click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell so the Soap Fairy alerts you every time I upload a new video. If you would like to see the original concept art that I created for this soap, head over to the Royalty Soaps Instagram so you can like pinch and zoom on the art and actually see it up close. We are creeping ever closer to the 12 days of Soapmas. It begins next Friday and it is a 12 day countdown to Christmas day. There's going to be a video every single day. And just a little spoiler, the last video, the one that's actually going live on Christmas day is going to be a P.O. Box unwrapping. A lot of you guys have been asking for that and I thought it'd be the perfect way to wrap up Christmas time. That about sums it up for today's video. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that's getting yourself a little something something from the target or avoiding that place altogether because your wallet cries every single time you walk through the door. Either way, do something that makes you happy and I'll see you Wednesday. Bye for now. Meow.